Ask yourself the question, how many times did you lose a match because you lost focus after tilting over your teammates? How many times did you win because you were telling your teammates how noob they are and that they should delete the game? And how many times were you able to make a comeback because you've managed to stay focused while the enemy's team was actually much better than yours? Welcome back to the Ultimate Rank Up Guide series. Today we have episode number 2, the psychology of the game. Hello my friends! Although your skill and knowledge of the game is super important, the psychology of each individual in the team is many times even more important and decides if you win or lose many many games. I find this a really important topic because nobody really talks about it. This is why I decided to make a whole video just about it. You will not learn a single mechanic of the game here, but if you soak up all of this, you will improve your win rate massively. Trust me. Tip number one, change your mindset. This is probably already the most important tip that I can give you. And here I'm going to be brutally honest with you. I've made a poll some weeks ago with the question, what hinders you the most from ranking up? And the majority of people were blaming their noob teammates. If you have this mindset, it's a huge mistake from your side and definitely hinders you from ranking up. I explained this concept a few times already now, but I have to repeat it once more, because it has to be said in a video like this. You will win 20% and lose 20% of all of your matches in solo queue, no matter how you perform. But this leaves 60% of the matches that can be decided by your performance alone. And I mean that seriously. In solo queue, you can have a win rate of 80% if you're really good. The problem is, almost none of us is that good. What means we are the ones that have to improve and not our new teammates. I'm not denying the existence of these new players. They exist all around in each and every rank. But they are not only in your team. The enemy have 60% of the time the same amount of noobs like your team has. So when you always have the MVP losing medal but a win rate of only 50%, it is you who is doing something wrong. And it is you who have to change something if you want to seriously rank up. Medals are in my opinion completely worthless anyway. If you have silver medals all over the place but a win rate of 65%, you're doing a really good job. What it is exactly that you have to change, I can tell you of course, because this is different for each and every one of you. It may be your rotation, it may be your knowledge of the heroes you play against, or it may be that you're not going enough for objectives. But here's the thing, you can find it out for yourself by simply following this whole series and realize for yourself what are the points that you have to improve. Also, another super important thing regarding your mindset is not losing the fun while playing. If you're not having fun or getting thrilled by the game right now, turn it off. If you're angry, frustrated, having the feeling that you want to throw a blah 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 blah. <laughs> Having the feeling that you want to throw your phone against the wall? Stop playing rank for now. With this feeling, you will lose many more games because your mind is not clear and you will make stupid decisions. And on top of that, you could have allies who flame you for that. What makes it even worse? So, long story short, I want you to have the mindset from now on that you're always the one that have to improve and that you should ask yourself the question before you enter the ranking match if you're having a good mood and if not, stay away from it. With this mindset alone, you will get very, very far and also have a much better time playing ranking. Tip number two, never be toxic. This is the tip that was sent to me the most. Never be the one that is toxic. This counts for all phases of the match. If your teammate has chosen an odd pick, don't get angry. If they blame you for their deaths, so be it. One of your teammates is angry at one of your other teammates, try to fix the issue. What works many times for me is simply writing no toxic please. Many people stop being toxic in the chat when you try to take the hate away from them. But if someone is just toxic by nature and you can't calm him down, just turn off the chat. Do your thing and ignore everything that interrupts your focus. Although teamwork and a positive mentality is much more important than your pure skills many many times, in some cases you can't just do anything and then it is better to focus on yourself and do your best to carry your team. And again, don't start to trash talk by yourself. Trust me about this one. The point where you start to trash talk people is the point where you don't focus on the game anymore and not only that. You also made the game even much more harder for everyone else 
because you're putting weight on your teammates who are already underperforming. They're most likely annoyed about that by themselves already. So kicking them while they are already laying down on the ground is not a good character trait. I can out here myself. I had points already where I was trash talking myself because I was really tilted over my teammates. But looking back at these matches, there were many matches that I could have maybe turned around when I still would be focused 100% on the match. So nowadays, I'm not doing it anymore. If it happens that your teammates are bad, just focus on carrying the game and adapt how your teammates play. If they are just running around without any vision, you can use it for example as an offlaner to steal their jungle camp or their tower, while they are distracted to pick up your teammate. Try to use everything to your advantage. And when that means that you have to use the new Panabi, who mindlessly clears any wave without any vision as a bait for an ambush, so be it. The enemy will most likely start to underestimate this new player very much and just want to get another free kill. So you can use that to your advantage now. That's how you can get through these dump matches, where you have the feeling that Moonton once again gave you the worst teammates possible, without becoming so toxic and angry that you just want to throw your phone against the wall. Now, I just said never be toxic, but this is kinda not true, because what you should do is... Tip number 3. Be toxic AF to the enemy. Spamming the recall button, use annoying emojis or just straight up tell the enemy how bad they are. Try everything so your enemies are losing their focus. Of course, this only really works well if you are at least even with the enemy. If not, it could boost the enemy's confidence even more, what could lead to their cockiness, but if you lose out, you better focus on other things. Here I'm showing you a live example. This Mia was really toxic towards me, because I was beating her around the park. What I did was simply telling her how bad she is and other not very nice things. This led her to give up the match completely, although Mia is a late game hero. Another example. Here, Argus tried to fight me and thought he can beat me down with his old active. Well, that completely didn't work for him. And all I need to write is, lol. He didn't write anything back, but many of us will get annoyed by that. So, try to make the enemy lose their focus and fully capitalize from it. Tip number 4. Encouragement. Instead of only writing something to blame your teammate or being toxic, write something nice whenever your teammates are doing something good that can start already in the draft pick phase. One of your allies adjusted, say thank you. Your allies rotated to your lane successfully, have the well played button in your quick chat so you can use it whenever someone did something good. Spread as much positivity as you can because even when something is going wrong, your teammates are more likely to say positive and focus on the match. Sometimes you have to be a little psychologist, but it can really work wonders. Because as I said, the outcome of many matches happens in the mind of each player. Unfortunately, I have to enter a big but here. You will encounter teammates who are toxic by nature. They just have this bad toxic mind and you can change anything about it. Also, just because you have nice teammates doesn't mean that they are good. So don't start to babysit them and follow tip number 5. Make your own play rather than your teammates play. What I mean by this is for example, when your teammates want you to help them out mid, but you haven't reached your power spike yet, what means you will not be a big help anyway, don't do it. Spam the retreat button or quickly write that you're not ready to gank yet. If they jump into a gank anyway and blame you afterwards, mute them and continue doing your plays. For example, most marksmen are completely useless in the early game. So your focus should be to get to your power spike as soon as possible. You're not supposed to gank yet or roam around the map. You need to farm, non-stop. That doesn't mean stealing the jungler's jungle camp by the way. If there's a gank right next to you, you can participate, but be really careful. Most mages can easily kill you and you don't have anything yet to fire back. The worst thing you can do is making bad plays because your bad teammates demand it. If you follow this bad plays, you will still get trash talk because why are you feeding the enemy? In some matches, you can't get avoided trash talked, so don't be scared of it. For this, you always have the mute option, so use it. Your allies are stupid bots from now on, and you have to play around them. Tip number 6. Avoid getting tilted. This is the reason why so many matches go downhill. You can't control what your teammates are doing, so getting tilted over stuff that you can't control anyway is absolute nonsense. Your teammates are non-stop in getting your buff, although you're the jungler. Take it as it is and try your best to play around it. Search for alternative ways to claim the victory and just farm everything that you can get your hands on. Because when you start to waste your mental capacity for blaming others, you will lose all of your focus on the match 
and guarantee lose because of it. Once you realize that you're getting angry, take a deep breath and tell on yourself to focus again. I just had a match with Harley, where my teammates made some incredibly stupid decisions. They went into 2v5 fights and although I told them multiple times to stay together, they didn't listen. It also didn't help that the enemy started to focus me. So as soon as I showed myself, I got beaten down. I started to become really angry. But then I did exactly what I just told you. I took a deep breath and thought, what can I do now? The solution was rather simple. I adapted to the playstyle of my teammates, who jump into unnecessary ganks, but waited until I was sure that the enemy couldn't stun me anymore. Then I jumped into the fight and took out the best performing enemies. My idiotic teammates died, but so did the whole enemy team, and we could take the victory. If I would just tilt and mindlessly jump into the fight, or just let my whole team die for the stupidity, I would have lost. So you need to have a clear mind and always think about what can you do to take the victory, despite your idiot teammates try everything to ruin that. Tip number 7. Don't give up. It happens many times that your team is losing in the early game. That's not a reason to give up. Mobile Legends is a game where you can make a comeback with only one successful gank. You just need to know where you can make this comeback. One possible comeback is when the enemies tries to take the Lord. They are all using some skills for it and they don't have their full HP anymore. So it's a perfect scenario for a gank. Also, even when the enemy took the Lord, you can attack them afterwards. For some weird reason, many players tend to gank directly after they just took the Lord, instead of waiting for it to spawn. That's your chance to take them down, since they don't have their full HP anymore. Another good comeback opportunity is in your base at the late game. When we hit the 15 minutes mark, the respawn times are very very long, but you have the advantage of your base and that you can recover your HP very very fast. So when the enemy tries to finish you off, they have to take risks and you can use that to your advantage. If you win the gank and maybe even wipe off the whole enemy team, you just won the game because you can simply push through mid and destroy the enemy's base. That's why again, never give up. Tip number 8. Never underestimate the enemy. Even if they play Layla as a jungler or some similar bad jokes. As soon as you start to underestimate your enemy, you become overconfident and make silly mistakes, which can mean that you lose this match. Take any opponent seriously or it can backfire horribly at you. As I just said, one successful gank can be enough to win a match. So even when you beat around the enemy around the park for 20 minutes, when you lose the next gank, you will lose the match. But we can also turn this around. When your team is losing out big time, this can be a chance for a comeback to you. Because the enemy could start to become extremely cocky and just spams the recall button around etc. Don't get annoyed by it and make them pay for it. There is nothing more satisfying than winning a game where the enemy felt like they have already won it. Another thing that would satisfy me is giving a big shout out to my patrons. Myst, Sensei Dragon, Core Bear, Garu OP and Luz. And you checking out the first episode of the series, where I'm telling you 8 things that you need to know before you even try to rank up. See you over there!